Alright, what's going on guys? I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is because I have been fighting a little bit of a cough. Um, I'm assuming it's some type of form of a cold. Uh, I've been getting a lot of mucus build up. Um, when you do have that kind of situation going on, what I'm doing now is um, every day taking Echinacea and Vitamin C. I take one of each in the morning and at night. Uh, those are immune bu uh, builders that'll help out a lot and then if you're getting a lot of mucus in your throat and you're coughing a good bit mucinex definitely takes care of it good stuff um, so I've been trying to <clears throat> make sure that I'm getting least amount of mucus in there as I can I actually just had a pop in echinacea because I'm getting I can feel a good bit of mucus here so I'm not I'm not gonna scream in this video <clears throat> I might do a little demonstration um, but when you have mucus build up or you have a cough, you really want to try to refrain from screaming because it is possible it can, you know, start to upset your vocal cords. Mucus, the biggest problem with that is that it, it creates a film over your vocal cords, so it's not going to create a perfect sound. It's not really dangerous to scream with mucus, but you don't want to do it, especially on stage. Um, so I'm going to explain a few things in this video. Uh, I get a lot of people asking me, questions about volume. A lot of people still asking me how do you create the actual scream sound. Um, so I get a lot of these questions. What I'm going to do is do my best to explain. Um, I do research when I, because I'm not a vocal coach, so I research stuff when people have questions. Um, so I found a lot, a lot of good information, some stuff I already knew, some stuff that goes into a little bit more detail than I do, so I'm going to help you out here. Um, as far as volume goes, it's kind of hard for me to describe what you might be doing wrong because when I first started screaming my volume problem was not that I was too quiet <clears throat> it was that I was too loud so you know by me being too loud I was straining my vocal cords um, I'd wake up the next day or hell even sometimes later on that day I wouldn't have a voice so I've never had the issue of screaming too quietly the only thing I can assume um, people that are screaming too quietly is that they're doing yeah yeah the angels won't spread their wings I'm assuming you mean something kind of like that which that's just um, to me it sounds like you're just trying too much to create that distortion sound and you're trying too much not to hurt your vocal cords um, you can do a pretty good volume without damaging your vocal cords so the volume that I do when I do this kind of scream Alright, sorry about that guys. That's one of the big reasons why you don't want to uh, build up in your throat. It's not really so much going to damage your vocal cords, uh, but it's just some nasty stuff. And if you were on stage screaming like that, it's going to screw up your scream. As you can tell, that scream sounds like shit. Um, and if you get a big chunk of mucus on your microphone, as disgusting as that sounds, it's very easily to destroy your microphone. And if you're using the venue's microphone, they'll be pretty pissed off at you. Anyway, volume. Like I said, I never had really the problem of lack of volume, but too much volume. Um, now, the way volume works is that your larynx, which is basically the, the big, the, your voice box is what they call it, and it rests about here. It's, it's pretty big. It rests about right here. Um, starts a little bit above your collarbone, and it goes right to about your Adam's apple. That's actually part of your uh, larynx. And that's where your laryngeas are, your vocal cords are, your pharynx are, um, pretty much everything is right there. Now, volume is controlled by when air passes through. Um, it's going to actually go through your laryngeas and help create sound by vibration. The stronger the vibration, the more volume you're going to have. So, when air passes through, if you have a stronger airflow, it's going to create more volume. Now, a big misconception is... You know, people use to say to push with your diaphragm, and that's true. But the way your body works is that everything happens so subconsciously, and everything happens at its own flow. You do not have to force that pressure. A lot of people that are trying to force that pressure, you know, they're, they're the ones that are saying, well, man, I'm, I'm trying to use my diaphragm, but it's not working, because they're trying to force it. It's actually an act that happens on its own. You have to focus on your voice. When you start focusing on your diaphragm, that's the problem because you're focusing on that you're doing something that your body already knows how to do so you know if you're just speaking if you're just speaking like this normal room speaking and then if you're speaking like this 
where you're a little bit louder, you can feel in your stomach. When you start getting louder, you can actually feel a little bit more of a pressure on there. But it's not strong. And it's the same way when you're screaming. You know, if you're screaming, if you're screaming, yeah, then all you need to do is envision yourself doing it a little bit louder. Yes, yes, you can scream, oh, yeah! And my scream still sounds kind of bad because of the mucus, I'm sorry. But there was a very small amount of pressure change there on my diaphragm when I did that. It's not something you want to force. If you try forcing it, if you try forcing it, then all you're really going to do is hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your stomach, and your scream's not going to come out right, and then you're so focused on your diaphragm that your scream is probably going to sound like shit because you're not focusing on it. Now, as far as the rest of the ways that uh, your body works with um, actually making sound and whatnot, um, like I said, it's your, your larynx is your voice box. Your laryngeas um, are the little flaps that control volume. Your pharynx, as they're called, um, are the ones that actually pronounce the vowel sounds. A -y -a -o -o. And the reason I say a -y -a -o -o is because that's all your pharynx does. Your lips and tongue are the ones that actually articulate to say A-E-I-O-U. That's your actual lips making that. So, you got to take that, all that into consideration, and you guys are asking me, how do you actually make the scream sound? That's something that happens subconsciously. I actually have, from a website, this is their wording on it. It says that, sound is produced when aerodynamic phenomena cause vocal folds to vibrate rapidly. Phenomena is basically what I try to explain to you guys. It's something that you can't really describe. It's a phenomena. It's, it's not really... It's not easy to explain. It's something that happens in our body. It's subconscious when it happens. So making the scream sound, I can tell you from an aerodynamic or from a um, from an anatomical view all day long. But for you asking me how do I actually make that scream sound, I can't say click your heels three times. Um, it's it's a phenomenon. So try your best. As humans, we have the ability to listen, learn and imitate. So you probably don't want to try finding the best screamer in the world out there and try to mimic his because it's probably not going to be easy. Um, but listen to some of your favorite bands. Practice trying to sound like them. Don't use too much force. Um, you know, take everything into consideration. Um, as far as that goes, that's about all I have really. Um, sorry if it didn't help much. I know this video is a long ass video that was basically just explaining a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But it's true. Trying to make the scream sound is a phenomena that I can't explain, uh, that most people cannot explain. Um, we can go into anatomical views and that's about it. As far as volume goes, like I said, it's all about air pressure. And practice just speaking in a normal voice, and then speaking a little bit louder, and then speaking a little bit louder even, and practice that, and then transition it to a scream. So you can be, uh, uh, then you could be, uh, uh. So work with that. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, I definitely will help out the most I can. But sometimes, you know, I explain so much in these videos that it's hard for me to go into a little bit more detail. But I hope this helps.